Hello, my name is Ryan Murphy, and I teach sociology at Chestnut Hill College. My wife and partner Krista and I both work there, in fact, and we're also associates of the Sisters of St. Joseph. We view our work at the college as ministry and find personal, professional, and spiritual fulfillment serving students in an institution that's so rich with the mission and charism of the Sisters of St. Joseph. In addition to our shared ministry at the college, we're also the proud parents of an eight-year-old little boy named Liam. And while I take my role as teacher and mentor very seriously, it's my identities as father and husband that I hold most dear, and it's in this spirit that I'm speaking today. Sister Jean Lorich invited me to offer a reflection on what St. Joseph means to me as a husband and father well over a month ago. I immediately responded with, yes, of course, without really understanding all that was involved. Perhaps this in itself is evidence of my long relationship with the Sisters of St. Joseph, that distinct inability to say no to anything. Since then, I must admit, I haven't really thought all that much about it. It's not to say I forgot about this assignment, but it just wasn't at the top of my list of priorities. The end of the semester crunch at the college, Liam's last few weeks of school, much needed family time and vacation days, road trips, family hikes, naps, meals out, trips to the beach, and well, just life. Life as part of a young family, simultaneously trying to cram everything in, but also desperately trying to slow down time and be present to each moment, to one another. But as I grew closer to this looming deadline, I reflected on all of this. In prayer, I used a common practice of Ignatian spirituality that I've learned over the years. I tried to compose myself in the scene of a simple carpenter's home in first century Palestine. I imagine what it would feel like to be overworked and underrested, to be behind on my woodworking deadlines, to never feel like there were enough hours in the day to hurry and put the finishing touches on a piece that I was working on, all while trying to shoo away a precocious seven or eight-year-old son who always seemed to be looking for attention, always wanting to kick a ball around or go play in a park, wondering why daddy couldn't just stop working for a little while and spend time with him on the things that mattered to him, like digging in the dirt behind the house or playing with toys. I could hear the voice of that little boy, Daddy, why are you always so busy with work? Just stop. You can do it later. I want to play ball with you. Now, as I reflected on Joseph's life as a parent, it became clear to me that God was speaking to me through this meditation on my role as father. Now, we all know that Joseph speaks exactly zero words in the Gospels, but his presence in Jesus' life and in our faith is quite large. It is in his simplicity and steadfast support of his young family that Joseph models companionship and mentoring for me as a father. There is a reassuring beauty in knowing that Joseph likely experienced many of the same loves, challenges, frustrations, and joys that I do as a father. He was almost certainly an imperfect man, and there's something so freeing, so comforting in knowing that. In short, It's Joseph's humanity, warts and all, that make him such an important role model for me and many others. I'm certain that Jesus hounded him to play when Joseph was far too busy in his workshop. But I also have to believe that despite those annoyances, and knowing that he'd be further from meeting his own deadlines with work, that the right thing for him to do was to wipe the sawdust off of himself and leave the hammer and nails, put down the saw, go outside and play in the dirt with his son. There's a lesson in that for me too. Whatever grading I might need to do, journal article or book I need to read, or lesson that I need to plan for, they'll always be piling up when I come in after being outside playing with my son. There's always going to be more to do. But as my son grows older each day, what I realize is that while there will always be more to do, What is not infinite are the days of genuine presence that we can spend with those whom we love.